You're watching The Legal Breakdown. Glenn, we finally got the news that we were waiting for from Judge Chutkin as it relates to the deadlines that she promised that she would bring forward. Now we got those dates, and they come extremely close to the election, so she held true to her claim that she wasn't going to allow the election to interfere with these court proceedings. So can you talk about the deadlines that she just passed down? Yeah, Brian, I try not to do hyperbole, but this is a big effing deal. Why do I say that? Because... There's a lot of evidence out there about Donald Trump's crimes, his conduct, the acts he undertook on and around January 6th to try to steal the presidential election. A lot of evidence that was heard by the grand jury, that was presented to them by Republican witnesses. Jack Smith has all that evidence available to him. And that evidence bears directly on Donald Trump's suitability or unsuitability to again be president of the United States. It's all been hidden from the voters until now. So today, I was in court earlier today, when the prosecutors said to Judge Chutkin, um, we are prepared to disclose it all, all of this evidence that is thus far unrevealed publicly, um, and we're prepared to disclose it by September 26th. Why? So you, Judge Chutkin, can perform the exact review and litigation that the Supreme Court told you to perform, go through all of Donald Trump's crimes, his conduct, his acts, and litigate whether each one represents an official presidential act, such that he's immune from prosecution, or not, an unofficial act, a private act, the act of a candidate. Yeah. And boy, um, Donald Trump's lawyers fought tooth and nail trying to convince Judge Chutkin do not, do not let the prosecution disclose any of it. Well, true to her word, we got her order this evening. And here is the only line in this two-page order that really matters. The government, the prosecutors, shall file an opening brief with all of that evidence on presidential immunity by September 26, 2024. So, Brian, in just three weeks, a little less than that now, we, the people, are going to see tons and tons of information and evidence about Donald Trump's crimes on and around January 6th that have not been revealed publicly yet. And frankly, I think the American voters deserve to see it rather than keep it hidden, keep it under wraps until after the election and then spring it on the American people. That doesn't make a lot of sense for the health and viability of our democracy. As you say, she didn't do this. She didn't set this timetable because it had anything to do with the election but she refused to push this until after right. the election for that purpose, which is what Donald Trump's lawyers asked her to do. Glenn, was this in some way a little bit of a backfire for those members of the U.S. Supreme Court who were obviously perpetuating these bogus ideas in deference to Donald Trump? Because, and I, and I ask that because, you know, clearly they did this to help Donald Trump in the upcoming election, to help him in the event that he does become president. And yet now, by virtue of being forced to litigate these issues in broad daylight with this with this mini trial that that's going to happen before the election, because we have to figure out, after all, which of these issues falls under the presidential immunity umbrella and which doesn't fall under the presidential immunity umbrella. Does this seem like a little bit of a backfire for those Supreme Court justices who clearly did this to try and help Donald Trump, which is far from what's happening right now, which is now where all, the, all of this stuff is going to be aired out for the American people to see? To the extent the goal of folks like Justice Thomas and Justice Alito, uh, the goal was to help Donald Trump, you're, you're darn right, this is a backfire. And frankly, it is a similar backfire to when they decided, ruled, that Donald Trump, even though he's an adjudicated insurrectionist, can stay on the ballot, contrary to the 14th Amendment. What did that do? Well, it left Donald Trump on the ballot rather than removing him many, many months ago and giving the Republicans an opportunity to perhaps put up a relatively untarnished candidate. So I do like to think that every nefarious act of the Supreme Court ends up somehow working against their goal to help protect Donald Trump. Now, Glenn, uh, like we had mentioned before, a lot of these uh, hearings now are going to happen within weeks of the actual election. We have special counsel Jack Smith has to file his opening brief on September 26th. We have Trump filing his response to that opening brief on October 17th. 
Smith is filing his reply brief on October 29th. So now we are just days before the election. Is there any way for this schedule to be appealed in any way? Or is this the schedule and there's nothing that Donald Trump can do about it? That's exactly the right question. What obstacles can Donald Trump try to throw up in front of this information being made available to the public beginning on September 26th? Here's what I'll say. There is no viable procedural way that Donald Trump can take what is a run-of-the-mill scheduling decision by a trial court judge and bubble it all the way up to the Supreme Court to try to employ their assistance again. Now, when I say there is no legitimate viable procedural mechanism, will he file something anyway? Of course he will. Will the Supreme Court reach down and try to help him yet again, even though the law and the procedures don't give them a, a, a lawful opportunity to do it? You know, my answer has got to be, I sure as hell hope not, but with this Supreme Court, I will never rule out them doing something that at a minimum is unorthodox and at a maximum is unconstitutional to try to help their man, Donald Trump. All of that said, Brian, I don't think a run-of-the-mill scheduling ruling by a judge can possibly make it all the way up to the Supreme Court and put a stop to this scheduling order. Okay, well, famous last words. You have, you have uh, Clarence Thomas out there, you know, saying, hold, hold my beer, basically. Uh, okay, so with that said, I do have more of a political question for you here. How damaging do you think that this will be in the lead up to the election, given that this type of mini trial is going to be put on full display for the American people to see? You know, it probably will not move Donald Trump's hardcore base of, you know, 20 percent of the American population. Right, but nothing I'm making will. That number, yeah, I'm making that number up. I don't know if it's 20 or 25, but you're right. Nothing will. But here's what it will do. Once these materials are revealed publicly and they're going to be voluminous and they're probably going to be really damaging because we're going to learn things about what those Republican witnesses said about Donald Trump behind closed doors in the grand jury under oath, stuff we don't know. Um, that, I have to believe, will be on an endless news loop for days and weeks to come. Um, and that is probably going to continue up through the election, given the briefing schedule, as you just set out, that Judge Chutkin has put in place. And interestingly, when I read this two-page order, I was looking to see if Judge Chutkin set another hearing, an in-court hearing like we had today, and she hasn't. So all we're going to see is this evidence tumbling out into the public square with the media picking it up and blasting it out as well they should. Let's get the real, truthful, accurate, reliable evidence of Donald Trump's crimes because goodness knows Donald Trump is forever throwing shit in the mix. I apologize there, but that's what he's doing. So now it's going to be met with some actual testimony that was presented to the grand jury under oath by Republican witnesses. Um, I, I have to believe that is going to be persuasive to some people who are still somehow in the middle or ruminating about who to vote for. This cannot possibly be helpful to Donald Trump's cause or his candidacy. And let's finish off with this. And the reason I have to ask this question is because we have seen the way in which Donald Trump can manipulate and distort what happens in the courtroom. To what extent is what happens in Judge Shotkin's courtroom going to be reported by people? And to what extent can it be uh, twisted into knots by Donald Trump because of because of pro a prosecutorial team that opts not to say anything? Yeah, what a great point. And, and let me quote Donald Trump's lawyer, John Lauro, to you in answering that question. How can they twist it? He actually said, and I wrote it down, though I don't have my notes in front of me, he said, Judge, if you go with the prosecution's proposal to let this information be revealed on September 26th prior to the election, it will be the most unfair thing any federal judge has ever done. Now, yes, that sounded like an you know, unhinged 2 a.m. Donald Trump social media post. It didn't sound like a, a responsible lawyer, yeah. but that's what he said. So you can already hear the attacks coming that what Judge Chutkin just did was what? Election interference by allowing truthful, accurate, sworn testimony and evidence come before 
the American people before the election. They twist and contort and lie about everything. Again, I think they only continue to fool the gullible, Donald Trump's core supporters, and I think the rest of the public will accept it for what it is and will probably be moved, and they will be moving away from Donald Trump's candidacy, I suspect. And, and knowing that Donald Trump is going to distort whatever happens in that courtroom with, with their bogus claims of election interference, do you think that there's any world in which Jack Smith and his prosecutorial team and the DOJ suspend their rule of not discussing or not commenting on any ongoing prosecution, any ongoing investigation, and actually come out to rebut what will inevitably be a deluge of disinformation from the Trump team? No, they absolutely will not. I know enough about career prosecutors, particularly ones like Jack Smith and the prosecutors he has populated his team with, some of whom I've worked with over the years, they will not depart from the practice of not commenting publicly on a case, even to correct the endless stream of lies that come from Donald Trump and his loyalists, his flunkies, his lackeys, and his mouthpieces. They're going to let the briefs that they file yeah. in this case do the talking. And, and all of that, by the way, underscores the importance of the work that that you, for example, are going to do, because I know that you'll be in the courtroom. And so uh, we look forward to getting your firsthand account of what happens in the courtroom. Uh, with that said, then, for those who are watching right now, if you want to follow along as this case continues to play out, and this will be a very important upcoming few weeks in this DC trial, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on the screen. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.